Senator Booker. You know a thing or two about making history yourself. Um, and I'm so happy you did because watching, whether it's watching the Supreme Court nomination hearings or anything else, you are truly our voice and I'm grateful, but I'm also mad. Okay. Um, and mad because it took so long. So we have three black senators now. Um, what is the pathway to ensure that history doesn't continue to, to be made so late? Like how do we ensure that we're opening doors and, and quickly so that the, the, um, the demographics in the Senate more accurately, accurately represent what we see in this country. Right, and, and I wanna say it's not just about having uh, non-traditional people at the table. It's really about, as Valerie was saying, what's going on in the room where it happens. And so take Ayanna, who we just saw, who's this incredible rising leader. She's coming from Boston area. Right now in Boston, the disparities in wealth between black families and white families, so the average income for a black, for a white family, median income is around $270,000 net worth. Uh, for a black family, it's $8. Right. Now that didn't just happen by accident. Those were federal policies, redlining, federal housing authority, uh, FHA loans. I could go through the federal policies that created those disparities in, in income. Right now we live in a nation where one out of every 17 African Americans can't vote because of felony disenfranchisement. Yeah. In Florida, it's about one out of every five African Americans can't vote, many of them for doing things that two of the last three presidents admitted to doing. Mm -hmm. The consequences we have for not having people at the table who are gonna fight for communities who know them intimately. I, I live in a low income area in the central ward of Newark and I see every single day people who work full time jobs as hard or harder than my parents did, trying to catch extra shifts where they can, still go to my local bodega and use food stamps. That's not the America that we believe in where people who work hard, play by the rules, should be able to get ahead. And so this is why we have, we need more people around the table. And I'll give you the last example of this. I sit on the Foreign Relations Committee. There's 20 plus senators there, only one woman. Now we know from international policy that when you empower a woman on the planet Earth, you, empower, you change nations. Mm -hmm. But to have one single voice representing women for the, for the committee that deals with the planet Earth is outrageous, it's ridiculous. And these are the kind of changes that have to be made. And what gives me hope about this election is that we're gonna be seeing a new wave of leaders coming to this country that reflect more perfectly the great union that we have. And to that point, um, part of I think what we deal with in kind of creating this history is this notion of electability. Um, really the myth of electability, who's electable and who's not. How do we work more diligently and again more quickly to dispel that myth of electability and what electability looks like? I'll let Senator's the professor, already doing no, it. No, I'll let the professor go ahead. <laughs> I know, I feel like he should answer. By example. Yeah, I mean, look, I, 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 people have told me, my, as many of the folks who've broken these barriers, what you can't do, that it's impossible, that this can't happen. Uh, and I'm tired of hearing that because uh, the conventional wisdom is not, is, to me, is something that we should always not be listening to or else we would never make change. Yeah. Uh, I heard with President Obama, literally until days before he was elected to president, folk, and even folk from my own community sitting yeah. in a barbershop, they ain't going to let a black man be elected president of the United States. People saying that it cannot be done. Well, it's always impossible until one shows that it's not. Exactly. And if you don't try, if you don't step up, and you don't let defeats come. I've lost my share of elections, but you keep pushing, keep changing. We're not gonna change this country. And everyone needs this. Uh, I don't care if you're a white man, uh, a, a, a transgender woman, uh, whoever, we need a country. And corporations know this, and you know this, Angela. More diversity makes for better teams, makes for better outcomes, makes for a benefit for the whole. And for this country to be fielding a team on the field and excluding multiple players um, we are losing out on the strength and the richness of this country, especially not only for our own benefit, but especially in an international context. We are a diverse, heterogeneous country. We'll be far more successful globally if we get all the players on the field uh, uh, contributing.